About a month or two ago, I uploaded a Cyber Dark video in Master Duel, and I said I was gonna make a deck tech video on it, and I never did, so I'm sorry, but here's the video now. We're gonna first go into the Master Duel deck list, and then I wanna also talk about the non Master Duel version, just in case people are interested. As a reminder, though, I'm not really amazing at Cyber Dark, so I think it's fun. I still prefer the light version of Cyber Dragons, but Cyber Darks is still spicy. This build might not be super optimal and amazing, but it's what I was running and having fun with, and I kind of tweaked a little thing here and there since the last video, but again, I don't play this deck a lot. I do play it for fun and when I want to spice things up, but again, it's not super competitive or amazing. There's probably better builds out there. Let's get let's get into it though. Getting into the Master Duel deck list, I do want to mention though first this. I wanted to build this deck around playing multiple versions or multiple copies of Cyber Darkness Dragon and getting like a lot of the gates on the field. I still think I need to sit down and figure out how to equip a lot more monsters on the cards because again, Cyber Darkness Dragon is spicy. This is not a once per turn to gate, and it, it doesn't have to even it doesn't have to be on Cyber Darkness Dragon. The the equip monster just has to be on your side of the field. So the idea of having multiple negates in a Cyber Dark build I thought was pretty cool, so I kind of wanted to exploit that. This deck I think does a semi decent job of that, not perfect, but that's kind of the idea of what I was going with with this build. That's why you see no machine dupe or clockwork knight or anything. I'm just focusing on getting that Cyber Darkness Dragon on the field with multiple negates. Anyway though, we got one hers, we got one Naxter. The Naxter I'm debating uh, cutting because it's not like the most useful card. The main reason I have it though is to revive Chimera probably like mid to late game. And if we do have Twin, Rampage, or Seeger, we need to re revive that. We at least have the option to do so. So debating cutting that, but we have it for now. Three Max C just because you gotta have it. It's, it's the best card in the game. We got three cores for starter, two cannon. I know some people say you need three. I think two is fine. We got three claw. You definitely need claw though because you need those spells in your hand. Then we have one of each. We got horn, keel, or horn edge and keel. If you really want to be ambitious, maybe you can run two copies of like one or two of them, but I think you're, you'll be fine running one. The thing is, if one does get like banished from the graveyard or something like that, it, it really stinks, but it, it's fine because we have six cyber dark cards so and also as a reminder you just need five cyber dark effect monsters to get this card out you don't actually need separate copies of the card if you want to go into cyber dark specifically yeah you obviously need the three criteria for it but cyber darkness is actually a little bit looser you just need more of the cards i kind of forgot about that but i like running one of each just because it's nostalgic and cool We've got two cyber dark chimera you can debate running three. I think three, it gets a little much. You definitely need two. I'm definitely trying to play as little copies as possible of these cards just because that leaves more space to actually playing cards that help us get to our plays, if that makes sense. So I think two is fine here. You're gonna see in about a minute when I go to the other build, I actually have three Chimera, but I'm kind of testing both, I guess. But if you have two or three, you should be fine. Got one Cyber Dragon just because it's, it's good to have, you need it, you get core, you get, you get your cards, it's, it's pretty easy. And we got Therion King Reg, yeah he's sweet and you do get another equip card. I mean, he, he already is like a walking the gate in himself, so it doesn't really matter with Cyber Darkness Dragon, but if you do have Cyber Darkness and I guess Therion on the field, you could technically just activate Cyber Darkness's effect to detach from Therion and then you get to keep your Therion, because if you do it the other way around, if you're just in the gate using Therion, then you lose your Therion Master. He's just good, there's no reason not to play like one, other, other than he's expensive, that's, that's the only reason. One Harpies is love for removing back row, which is good. Two Power Bond because of Chimera and it's just the best fusion card. Overload Fusion because we are playing Verde Anaconda. We got three Cyber Emergency, just as another starter obviously. We got two Triple Tactics and one Prosperity. This deck can play through some negates and having cards like, you know, Triple Tactics or even Pot of Prosperity, you can find your puzzle pieces pretty easily or just some extra cards that you need. I think Triple Tactics works super well in this deck because again, you, you need as many Cyber Dragon cards either in your hand, on the field, or in the graveyard so when you activate Power Bond or I guess Overload Fusion, but I guess more specifically Power Bond though because if you have the cards in your hand, you can still Fusion Summon and get your big Cyber Dragon monsters out. But this deck can play through negates. You can negate like cannon or something or just some other cards and you kind of keep going because we have a lot of cards that kind of, you know, play off each other and stuff. Negates do hurt this deck, but when you have Triple Tactics or even Pot of Prosperity, you can at least try and dig for at least one more piece, which oftentimes if you have one more Cyber Dark monster and you get that means you get to summon the big monster. So running two Cybernetic Horizon. The card's really good. Obviously, you get to fill your graveyard, you get a card to your hand, you get a starter, and you get to get Cyber End to the graveyard or, or eternity. But typically Cyber End. The reason why I'm not running three though is just because I'd rather search this card than actually draw it. It just requires a lot to use also. You only need to really resolve this once, like one good resolve. The reason why I'm running two of those opposed to one is if some reason one of them gets negated, that's just a big sad and we really need a way of getting the cyber end to our graveyard. 
but even if it does get negated just the cost of this card being able to send at least two monsters to your graveyard is sweet again typically the options are always going to be hers and cyberdark chimera oftentimes it might not be but those, those are your two options you really want to go for then we got three cyberdark realm just gotta have it searches your cyberdark cards and unless you normal summon for free one key thing though don't forget this because i keep forgetting for some reason you add a cyber dark monster from your deck to your hand with a different name from the cards in your graveyard so if you were to activate let's say cybernetic horizon and you send your chimera to the graveyard from the deck or hand for whatever reason and then you want to activate cyber dark realm to get chimera to the deck to hand no 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 you can't do that because it has to be a different name from your graveyard so just keep that in mind kind of when you go about your play lines make sure you don't send one of the cyber dark cards in your graveyard that you actually want to get to the hand two call by because you can again ash hurts this deck i mean hand traps hurt every deck i understand but being able to at least negate that is spicy and fun two cyber eternal i've been the more i play this deck and the more you know i have fun with it the more i'm like yeah cyber eternal sweet this card makes it so we can get two cyber dark and big dragon dudes out on the field at turn one or turn two whatever turn you're playing and we could typically play through again one the gate depend, obviously depends with the cards in your hand but typically if you have cyber eternal you can easily get another cyber dark ends on the field the reason why i'm playing two though even though it's searchable off a of core the thing is i want to open this in my hand so it's like why not play three well it's like i can't play three because a lot of things need to happen in order for that card to be kind of good this card just pushes the the deck and capabilities like over the edge which is sweet but not all the time it's, you, you kind of want it in your hand not all the time it's going to resolve or you're going to get to the state where you can get the maximum use out of this card so the reason why i'm playing too is i really want to draw into it or have it in my hand with all my other puzzle pieces when i play core i really don't want to be searching for cyber eternal i'd rather just like have it in my hand or something so yeah, that's just the reason for that don't forget you can banish this from your graveyard and you get to protect your cards and I have one Cyber Dark Invasion. I don't love this card, but I, I, it is good. It's just not amazing. You get to equip more monsters to your cards. That means potentially more negates. Then you get to send the cards to your graveyard. And you get to destroy things on the field. It's just, it's just good. And again, we're, we're kind of focusing more on the equipped aspect of this deck or with the ability to equip more cards. I don't think I'm maximizing the equip stuff as much as I could be again, but I may have to sit down and kind of laser focus on some of the things I could add. I think like attachment cyber might be pretty good in this deck, but for now this is what I'm running in the main deck. Extra deck, we got Rampage, Twin, pretty basic. Cyber Dark Dragon, just because it's fun. What a cool monster. There are some times when you can still summon Cyber Dark End with Cyber Dark Dragon and Cyber End, so you don't always need to summon it using Cyber Darkness Dragon. Got one Fortress just because you can. Cyber End, you need it for the fusion. Two Darkness Dragon because you technically only need one, but like in case something gets in case it gets banished from the graveyard, in case something happens, I like to just have a backup option. And because I'm, I want to kind of laser focus on this card being like the centerpiece of the deck, I don't want it to get banished from the graveyard or something like for that. So got one Mega Fleet, pretty standard. One Eternity Dragon, again pretty standard. You can banish it from your graveyard, protect all your Cyber Dragons. Got two Cyber Dark End because you can get two out. Because we're running two Eternal, the deck kind of focuses on that. And it's such a sweet card. Yeah, man, it's so cool. Like, sometimes, like, I look at this card, I'm, like, kind of dumb. Like, it's just, it's just two huge, amazing monsters just slapped onto each other. But then it's like, ah, it's so cool. Lightning in the background. Yeah, I'm going to probably whip out my Cyber Dark build again. Got the Pegasus. I would probably run the Elder Entis, but I don't feel like spending ultra rare points in this. So if you have Elder Entis, put it in the deck. But if you have Wind Pegasus, it's also kind of fine. Just in case you do end up equipping something using Claw and get sent to the graveyard, then, then you can use this card and get some value off of it. Got Seeger, Plutter Plant Verde, pretty basic. And then we got the Dark Charmer because we're running so many darks. Don't forget too, when you play this deck, if you have things like Cyber Darkness Dragon out and you got your like Horn, Keel, or Edge, with a cyber dark like cannon or claw you can send that to the graveyard with your cyber darkness dragon to negate stuff as long as you have an equipped monster on the field as long read this card read this card with me you can send one equipped card you control to the graveyard and negate the activation if you do destroy the card it doesn't even have to be on this card again that's uh, not even once per turn abusing that ability is insane you can have like five negates you can have so many even more negates if you got cyber dark invasion now so this is my master do build take a nice look at it one more time again it's not amazing it's just Kind of what about slapping together and figuring out heading on over to a non master dual build so this is like a, a tcg build it's all quite similar we'll briefly go over it i got one jizikiru Therion, same thing the reason why i have a jizikiru here is because again we're not we don't have any maxi so you gotta replace it with some other kind of flex box i like i just like jizikiru i just hey you got a monster in the field you're done it's, it's over 
one cyber dragon three chimera I, swear, I got three chimera in this i know i said two in the other the more i play the game the more two is probably fine but right now i just put three in the deck this could be a flex spot if you want to take it out throw another board break or something got again one of each cyber dark monster two claw or sorry two cannon three claw three core same thing one hers same thing three two horizon harpies overload fusion you don't necessarily need it because we don't have protoplant verde but it's also a good card though because if you just do draw it you all a lot of our monsters are going to be in the graveyard i just feel like we needed another option to fusion summon because if we can't activate chimera's effect and get power bond then we can't banish from the graveyard so just having some other option to fusion summon i think is pretty important but again we can't like search this in this deck how i have it laid out right now so kind of relying on chimera's effect resolving that is kind of interesting at this point do we just play like overload fusion the thing is though being able to fusion someone from your hand oh it's just hand graveyard and field like and then it doubles the attack like the power bond is just so good but again it's fragile so you gotta pick your poison overload fusion might be a little bit safer but anyway uh, one pot of prosperity it's just really good in this deck same thing we got the triple tactics down here two of them if you have the ability to run two pot of prosperity like you you have two of the cards yeah probably run two i only have one of them in real life i guess technically i would run another second one here maybe take out the chimera i have all these cards in real life just minus the therion and if i wanted to play an extra pot of prosperity but yeah i do need therion still so for board breakers i had three right geki evenly matched i'm not gonna say it's bad but for this deck I, I don't like the, how it conflicts because we're running, you know, we got a lot of continuous spells. We're going to have a lot of equipped cards in the field. I just feel like there are better cards than evenly matched for a deck like this. So I think Raigeki's okay. I have down here like Dark Hole, maybe Clock, I don't know. We'll go over the maybes in a second, but Raigeki, Board Breaker, just some flex spots that you think is good. Maybe Book of Moon. You got the Triple Tactics. We got Call By, the two Cyber Eternal, the three Realm, and then one Invasion. Pretty standard. Extra deck is exactly the same. I just have two Elder Entis instead of Protoplant the Verde and the Wing Pegasus. I think this is better having these two here. Typically though, I don't want to go into Horn, Edger, Keel, and then equip it with Cyber Dark Claw, but at the same time, often, there's some situations where you just have to do that, like you don't have any other play lines, so you want to at least be able to pop something on the field or just some, something else to happen, so using extra deck is just some other kind of resource and play line. Some cards I was considering is Gizmek Orochi. Uh, just banishing those cards is not that spicy. This deck really hurts if you banish the wrong card, and yeah, I don't think it's okay. Attachment Cyber, maybe. Uh, actually, I think there's a place for it. Finding some room, maybe a little hard, maybe taking out Chimera, maybe just substituting it in for the Therion card. You could definitely make room for it. I don't know if it's amazing. I think playing a card like King Reg is probably better, but Ash Blossom though, maybe taking out Raigeki, just, yeah, Ash is good, it's great, but I just didn't have it in the deck. Naxter, oh, I did take Naxter out of this deck. Hmm, why did I do that? So this deck doesn't have Naxter, so if I did have to put Naxter in, maybe I'd take out Chimera. What Naxter also does too is it gives us another Cyber Dragon monster, so if we were to go into Rampage, it's a little bit easier. So right now we only have five Cyber Dragon names if we wanted to go into Rampage or Twin. However, Naxter at least gives us another option. Again, I can make the case for playing and not playing Naxter. Got Wing Pegasus, yeah, maybe, but I think Elder Entis is just a little better. Got Abelooza, eh, I don't see myself ever summoning this, but it could be good. Would love to play Cyber Dark Impact, but I don't know. Again, finding the space is hard. Great thing about this, though, is it gets shuffled back into the deck, which can be good or can be bad, depending on what you're thinking. But Dark Hole could be a better board breaking option. Foolish Burial, I just don't think is good enough. I, again, it can help start the plays, but I think cards like Cyber, like protecting and making sure Cybernetic Horizon goes off is so much better than Foolish. I don't know if Duality is amazing in this deck. Again, may, I, I still have to test out a lot of stuff, but like, can we even get Cyber Darkness Dragon out for free? Must first be Fusion Summoned us, I don't think. Technically, duality special summons, it does not fusion summon. I can see the case for playing it, but right now I'm not. Super Poly could be pretty fun. Clockwork Knight, I just don't think that there's enough cyber dragons to abuse it. Also, it's just another continuous on the field when I want to focus on having more, more negates and equipped cards or equipped monsters on the field. So, Cyber Inferno could be good. Like, I love the idea of this card, and actually, yeah. Hmm because effect monsters can't be destroyed by card effects you can't target them with effects yeah that's probably a card i should make space for <sighs> it just stinks because it doesn't help start the play but i think we gotta i think i gotta throw one in there and the thing i'll take out we'll just take out one chimera 
I think it's just too good. Evenly matched, again, we're talking about it. I just, I think there are better cards that can be played in this deck. Again, I think evenly matched is amazing. But for this deck and what it's going for, I just think there are other cards. And an additional Pot of Prosperity, if you do have the monies or the card already, maybe throw it in the deck. Just will help with that consistency. I think Cyberdark Inferno for this deck and what I'm going for is just too spicy. So I'm going to add that. Play test it out. Anyway, though, that's my Cyber Dark build. Again, not a perfect Cyber Dark player. This might not even be an optimal build. I still need to kind of tweak some things potentially. But it's a cool deck and I enjoy having fun with it. If anyone abuses the Cyber Darkness equip negate effect thing, let me know down below kind of like your build or at least some cards I should probably add. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Check out some other videos on the channel. Take care, everybody. I'll see you around.